right now in 2024, we're at the end of a lot of things. Mm. That means things are shifting. Whenever a planet gets to the end of the sign, a lot of activity happens. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe this is going to be a quiet year. It's almost very dramatic in a way because I feel like it's going to go really big. Mm. You know, whatever's going to happen is going to be exaggerated. Mm. Welcome. I'm Alyssa Nobriga, your host of the Healing and Human Potential podcast, a place for you to discover the multidimensionality of what it means to be human. Over the past 20 years, I've trained thousands of coaches in my methodology, leveraging my experience as a former psychotherapist, and I'm here to share with you all the wisdom and insights that I've learned along the way. Each week, I'll share with you life-changing tools to support you in awakening and manifesting your dream life from the inside out. We'll be exploring the intersection between ancient wisdom and modern everyday life, really diving deep into the art of human potential through the lens of psychology, spirituality, and coaching. Let's let the magic unfold. I've been really enjoying astrology and following the insights that it can offer us in different areas of our lives over the last few years. And I've been using it as a tool both for personal reflection, but also setting up professional growth. And astrology is so much bigger than our monthly horoscope or just a general understanding of our sun sign, which is our main sign. It's really the language of the stars, and it can tap into a deep intelligence of the universe when we align with it. And so people have been getting an idea of what's to predict for the year ahead, and I'm so excited because that's what we're going to do in this episode with Danielle Page. She's going to help us explore what are the major energies and what can we anticipate for 2024 and just all things astrology. So Danielle is a sought-after, soul-centered astrologist who really merges astrology, energetic healing, and intuition to help people clear old patterns and tune into their cosmic rhythms. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank Yay. you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. I've been wanting to have you on, and I know you have so much to share. We're going to keep this 1.0 for people, but just to get us started, will you share with us what the big three is? The big three. Yeah. Okay. Your sun, moon, and rising. Okay. So in terms of that, we're talking about the astrological chart, your birth chart when you're born. Yeah. So the rising sign is about how you move through life. I like to say it's the glasses that you wear. It's kind of like the vehicle you drive. So you maneuver with this energy, okay, of when, your rising sign. When people say like, oh, for me, I'm a cancer. Mm -hmm. Is that the sun sign? Cancer, if that's sun your sun sign. sign. Okay, so yep. that's when typically people will say like that's your main yes. astrology. Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah. People, like what's your sign is your sun sign. Okay. So the big three, the um, sun, moon, and rising. But we'll just start with the rising. Okay. Like I said, it's where you um, greet people, how they see you, what they what they see. It's almost like the great fake out, I like to say, because you can be a fire sign rising and then be a water sign sun or moon. And so then you're super sensitive, but then you're fiery when you meet someone. Okay. okay? So, so like the outward facing yes, is the rising. Outward facing. Yeah. Okay. And then your sun sign is your life force. It's who you are. Mm. I like to say at the end of the day, when I go to bed, I'm a Taurus. So like, I know I want my luxury. I know I want my like nice thread count sheets, you know, um, those things are very important to me to yeah. feel grounded and stable. So your sun sign is how you express and how you move through life. Um, here's a little hint that we actually grow into our sun sign as we get older. Interesting. So we, when we're younger, we're more of our moon sign, especially mm -hmm. um, before seven, mm -hmm. all about the moon. So parents, it's really, really important to know your child's moon sign. Okay. So then we get to the moon and the moon is your inner world. It's your emotional world. Mm. It's what you need to feel safe, nurtured and how you react. So it's also interesting because a lot of people don't see people's moon. Like on Instagram, on TikTok, or you're probably not going to see someone's moon. You're going to see their rising. You're going to see their mercury and how they talk. But the moon is when you go to bed, when you have a partner and you live with your family, you live with your partner, they, they get to know your inner workings. Mm -hmm. So it's a little private. It's a little hidden. Mm -hmm. It's behind closed doors. Okay. Like I have a water sign moon. A lot of people Same. don't know that because I'm fiery. Yeah. But I'm are. like, I'm super sensitive <laughs> underneath <laughs> Me too. that, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Pisces are. moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, and so there's the different elements. The fire is a bit, what it sounds like, spicy, fiery, yes. like the Leo kind of, uh, as one example, like life of the party or like likes to be seen. Yes. Will you kind of take us through some of the generalizations of the different signs just to kind of get a sense? Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's make sure let's I, do I get it. them all. Okay. So we have okay. Aries. Aries is the first one out the gate. So they're fiery. They, they're about courage. They're about jumping in. 
So they're just, they're the first ones out there. Okay. Then we have Taurus and Taurus is all about comfort and sustaining the energy that Aries started with. Mm. Okay. Then you have Gemini and Gemini is, Gemini is a fun sign. Gemini is the information and the messenger and carrying it to and from each other. Mm. Then you have Cancer and cancer is all about the nurturing and to make sure you feel safe. You're at Cancer Sun. Mm -hmm. Make sure you feel um, safe and um, you know really that embodied with the heart space. Mm -hmm. Then we have Leo, and Leo is Leo is fiery. Leo is life of the party. Leo is going to be the manager of like how we arrange things, how we get things done. Mm -hmm. So it could be a little dramatic because mm -hmm. it's a fire sign, so it's loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then we have Virgo, and Virgo is how we refine things, mm -hmm. um, really edit things. Um, you know, a lot of people work, they're in physical therapy, they're in yoga, they're in holistic health, like they're really getting into the fine the details, details mm -hmm. and, and, and improving. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they Very see organized the things. too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they see things. Then we also, we go into Libra. Libra is very relationship oriented. So Libras came here to learn about themselves through another person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they are the bicycle built for two and they, they're learning through the mirror of someone else. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very rare when you see someone with a lot of Libra in their chart, if they're single, I always want to find out more, mm -hmm. you know, cause we all have our own, um, programs and belief systems, as you know, um, but if you have a lot of Libra in your chart, you know, you are meant for relationships because that's how you're going to really move through life and mm -hmm. thrive in this lifetime. Then we have Scorpio. And Scorpio is diving deep. I like to say Scorpio is putting on your scuba gear mm -hmm. and going underneath the surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it gets a bad rap all the time, Scorpio. Yeah. So I always throw in there... Um, even if you don't believe in astrology, just don't piss off a Scorpio. <laughs> Scorpios know what I'm talking about. But they are they are powerful. Yeah. They are magicians. It's mm -hmm. about alchemy. So mm -hmm. they can take something and turn it into another. And so they have a drive, an inner drive in them that's so strong. Mm. Okay. So we have Sagittarius. And then Sagittarius is about learning, higher education. Sag is taking all the information that you've gathered from travel, from you know, meeting with shamans, meeting with healers and sharing that information with the world. Mm -hmm. So it's really going beyond the, the childhood like upbringing and like what you learned in school mm -hmm. and going beyond that into the sense of expanding your mind. It's a higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you'll see a lot of Sag, like they're always like, I know the way I know the answer because they're, they have a lot of information yeah. and they need to share. Beautiful. Then we have Capricorn and Capricorn is you know, when you think of the term boss lady mm -hmm. or just any boss, that's Capricorn. Yeah, so Capricorns usually rock it in yeah, business, right? They absolutely do. Yeah. If you have a lot of Capricorn in your chart, you are you're driven, you're motivated mm -hmm. because you just know that you're here to build. Mm -hmm. Right. And it could be anything. It could be, you know, working for a company, running your own business, being a mom. But if you are a Capricorn, you are going to create the foundations and build on them. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is to, you know, get it out to the outside world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's very, very strong. Then we have Aquarius. Aquarius is really about marching to the beat of your own drum. So they are very eclectic. They are very genius. And they're here to show us new ways of doing things. Mm. Um, they're, I, I love Aquarius because they, they don't really care, mm -hmm. you know? They just, everyone's wearing a pink hat. They're like, they're <laughs> going to wear purple with polka dots, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, I, just, I love that. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. So they're showing us um, new consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then Pisces, Pisces is everything connected in one, mm. right? Pisces is beyond this realm and this realm. So they're the fish swimming in two different directions, so they always have one foot in the other realm and one foot here. So just a little tip and a note, Pisces, they need to zone out for a while. Mm. They will do that because that's just part of their process of them downloading information because all day long they're mm -hmm. getting information. But they're truly here to show us compassion mm. and love. But I will throw this, another tip out for Pisces is you're learning boundaries because in order to be a Pisces, you don't have boundaries. That's mm -hmm. why you're so psychic and intuitive because mm -hmm. you could reach into the other realms. But because of that, sometimes they could become martyrs because mm -hmm. 
you know, it's like, here's a shirt off my back and now I have nothing, but here you go and now I die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. dramatic, but so you can understand. Yeah. So they're learning boundaries. This is fascinating. So I know the Enneagram really well. So yes, I'm seeing Enneagram. some parallels yes. between some of the, the types or the astrology, um, the different ones. And so it's fascinating because in what you were saying is we've got our sun again, which is, you said that's where the way that we are when we're younger. Yeah, well, we, we shine our light. That. Yeah, we're we're always our sun sign, but we're moving into the higher expression of that through life. Okay. So we always are our sun sign. Yeah. It's just we're really learning how to embody that, and that changes as we get older. Mm-hmm. So our sun sign, our rising, how we are perceived usually on the outside, mm-hmm. and then our moon, which is how we are more internal, our inner yes. workings. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. all the parallels. Yeah. And, you know, it's like we are the ones to type for at least in the Enneagram ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I love astrology and I'm diving deeper yeah. into it and you have been such a guide. Thank and I, I just, I want to jump right into the big burning question that I'm sure everybody has. What is sort of in the stars for us in 2024? What yeah. as a general, cause I know there's unique types for everyone, yeah. but just as a whole collectively, what can, what's in the stars for 2024? Yeah. So there's a lot going on. Yes. There's been a lot going on. Yeah. And one thing I want to preface with that it's really important. Astrology is not necessarily used to predict every detail. Yeah. What it is, is you can see the cycles and you can see the patterns. So every planet is an archetype. Mm-hmm. And once you understand the archetypes, you could understand how they vibrate. What's the frequency? So when they come in and they aspect another planet, you get an idea of what's going to happen. But it's really important to say that we have free will, yes. right? It depends on our collective consciousness, though I'm concerned about our collective consciousness <laughs> overall. It's just, it's a little questionable these days, but, but that's where we're at as mm-hmm. a whole, right? Mm-hmm. So that really, that comes into play of like how we use this energy and Beautiful. how it plays out. So Beautiful. we really do have free will mm-hmm. and that's why it's really important for more people to do their work, to see through some stuff, just like, really understand bigger picture yeah. instead of just so narrow-minded, right? Yeah. That's really important. And like the potential probabilities of mm-hmm. certain things yes. that themes around like if Venus yes. is relationships, how is yes. that going to be mirrored to us around what our relational dynamics yes. are? Yeah. yeah. And that it's exactly what you said. There's so many potentialities. There's so many probabilities, right? And it depends on where we're at yes. in the world and in our life and on our journey. And the work that we've done within mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah. So that we're perceiving it as negative or positive. Is right. it an opportunity for growth? Yeah. Or have I done the work or have I been postponing and pushing it down? Yeah. And then it is more confronting. Yeah. Okay. So thank okay, you for so that. Okay. So that That's being good. said, yes. 2024 is a dynamic year. Okay. Okay. It's, um, now, this is from stuff that I'm seeing, um, you know, looking at the transits and also stuff that I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. 2025, because it's important to talk about that, um, there's going to be a lot of outer planets that are changing signs. So that's a very big deal. So that means right now in 2024, we're at the end of a lot of things. Mm. Okay. And so that means, and I have chills as I'm saying this, that means things are shifting. Whenever a planet gets to the end of the sign, a lot of activity happens. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe this is going to be a quiet year. Mm-hmm. It's an eight year, very dynamic, um, very, it's almost very dramatic in a way because I feel like it's going to go really big. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever's going to happen is going to be exaggerated. Mm. Okay. So one of the big um, transits that's happening for 2024 that I would say this is the biggest one is Pluto moving into Aquarius. So I'll back up here. Now this might be a little yeah. confusing, but I'll try to break this down. Great. So Pluto is a planet. I know it was like a dwarf planet, then it became a planet, then it became a not. I don't know what they're deciding, but it doesn't matter. It's powerful. Yeah. Okay. So it is so incredibly powerful. And Pluto goes in, It's it has the energy of Scorpio in a way. So Mm. it goes in and it transforms. Mm. Okay. It takes what it is and it pulls it out and transforms something into another thing. Pluto is very slow moving. So it's not like a one and done. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a journey and it's a process. Now, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Okay. Okay. 
Capricorn is very much about top-down government. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of the old structures crumbling mm -hmm. because Pluto is on its way out of Capricorn. Okay. So that's where we've been seeing a lot of and in the U.S. we have the presidential on. elections. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be very interesting mm -hmm. on so many levels. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many ways to, right? So we've been seeing a lot of the systems that we were just sort of going along with because maybe that's just what we knew. That's just like mm -hmm. it, we didn't really question it until we started questioning it, right? Yeah. So we're questioning it, and things are crumbling because Pluto is at the end of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also, when Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008, that's when that whole recession started. Interesting. Okay. So we might see something, like we're seeing it now. I mean, the economy is not like the best it's ever been, mm -hmm. right? Well, Pluto is at the end of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised. I've talked about this many times before. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2023, Pluto dipped its toe in Aquarius. Okay. okay. It went in gave a little taste, then went back into Capricorn, okay? And I'm very familiar with this because I have something at the end of Cancer, which is opposite of Capricorn. So Pluto has been blasting me open <laughs> for the past year and a half, <laughs> let me tell you, okay? So I can't wait for it to go into Aquarius yeah. because I've been getting ripped open. Mm -hmm. That's what the planets do, mm -hmm. right? They pull you out things need to purge and you step into a new version. Yeah. Okay. So going back to this. So in 2024, it's around January 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd, because mm -hmm. it's, it's all happening around that time. Pluto moves into Aquarius mm. and it's going to stay there mm. for until, what is it? Um, 2043. Oh, wow. okay. So this is a huge, huge turn yeah. in the collective. Now, we already got a taste of this last year, and we can see this in AI. So to mm -hmm. back up, so the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was 1798, okay, around the Industrial Revolution. Wow. So we saw what happened around yes. then. So this is our new Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, with technology, because Aquarius is otherworldly mm -hmm. technology this Innovation. is why it's like normal now that like that you know that we see on tv the aliens are coming and people are like ah oh, what's new you know mm -hmm. it's like because it's already been in our consciousness yeah. right so we're dealing with technology with ai um other beings we're we're stepping into another realm mm -hmm. so it's going to advance so quickly mm -hmm exponentially exponentially yeah. and so there's a lot of people that maybe don't know about ai i mean they've heard of it but they don't really know mm -hmm. and then there's people that are working in ai mm -hmm. right and i just started understanding more about it mm -hmm. and it it is crazy what's already exists mm -hmm. and that yeah. people don't even know yeah and you know there there are concerns with AI and absolutely mm -hmm. because we're humans mm -hmm. and if we, it doesn't get into the right hands, mm -hmm. then things are going to go awry. But that's where we have to bring it back to our consciousness mm -hmm. is can we use this technology for good? Can we use yes. this for beautiful, like, um, you know, medical help for actual real science and to change our lives, yeah. you know, um, to help heal? Mm -hmm. Or it could all, and it will be used for not the highest good because yeah. that's just the reality of Earth that we're on. Mm -hmm. So I think Duality. that's not being negative. That's just the reality mm -hmm. that it's not all rainbows mm -hmm. everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So this Pluto going into Aquarius, humongous change for all of humanity. Wow. And what that means, like how do we up. live our life? Yeah, so that's, it's coming up in January and then it moves in. The 20th. Of, yeah. yeah, around there. So that's going to be, and it's also another shift, you know, with everything, we can say there's good, there's bad. There's a full spectrum. There's a lower octave and there's a higher octave. And I like to teach in my classes, there's 50,000 shades of gray in between. Yeah. yeah. And that's the reality. So with Aquarius, it's for humanity, yeah. right? So it's, it's less about these governments and it being top down. Mm -hmm. That's trying to, you know, move away. And it's more about power to the people. Okay. And so you're, we've already been seeing a lot of this and people coming together mm -hmm. and we're... We're, we're humans, we're doing this, we're here mm -hmm. together, like what does this mean, right? So we're gonna see a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful as well. Yeah. Right, and so. And we have the choice to use all of the challenges yeah. to help us grow yes. and evolve. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, like always. So that is the biggest shift okay. that's gonna come in. And 
You know, I understand that if someone's new to astrology, this could be a lot, you know, overwhelming. Just go slow with astrology yeah. because it, you could break it down and it will all make sense. But this shift is truly the turn of humanity. Mm. And we're, we're here to usher it in. Yeah. And we all chose to be here to usher it in mm -hmm. because we agreed to this. Mm -hmm. And so that means we're equipped. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, you got something it. just fell. Did you hear that yeah. right when I said that? Uh -huh. We're equipped. <laughs> <laughs> we're equipped. Yeah. With the instructions in our soul mm -hmm. of how to navigate this mm -hmm. journey because it's going to be a wild one. You know, we're not going to recognize humanity in 20, 30 years. It's mm -hmm. going to be very different. Mm -hmm. And that can be scary or it can actually be exciting. And, you know, one of the things that I teach my students is we have to become malleable. Yes. We have to be like plasma. It's very important because that's the only way. Yeah. People have different relationships with change. Mm -hmm. And only 30 years ago did the internet start. Right. And that was a revolutionary new... I cried when I had to start an email account. I <laughs> cried. I thought it was the most confusing thing. So yeah. So we can, we can navigate, we can manage. And the more work that we do within ourselves, that micro is then macro mm -hmm. shared and shifted. And so yes. I love the perspective of we were equipped, we've got this, mm -hmm. we can use all of it to grow and evolve yeah. and serve humanity. Yeah. And, you know, notice our relationship with change. Because big. this is a this is a big change that's coming in yeah. in Aquarius, January twentieth. Yeah, Kay. and we really need to understand that it's about unity. Yes, unity consciousness is so big, and you know this whole divide and conquer. I mean, it's getting very old, mm -hmm. you know, and it's gonna just play out until it doesn't need to play out mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's where we need to shift: is that we are in this. Yeah, and everyone's gonna have their own journey. It doesn't need to be the same as ours. Yeah. But we are a collective. Yeah. And that's what people need to understand. Yeah. And I think that's, that is the movement towards inclusion and connectivity mm -hmm. is more of what's going to support yeah. us in healing. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the othering is what's causing mm -hmm. challenges yeah. inside of our own psyche yes. and in the world. Do you want new tools and powerful group exercises to help you deeply and profoundly change your life? Maybe you feel overwhelmed with the idea of starting or scaling your business and wish you had the strategy the community and the support to really help you shortcut the learning curve. If so, I want to make sure that you know that our most popular event of the year is back by demand and it's absolutely free. So this is my five day confidence and clients bootcamp and it's coming up for new and seasoned coaches, therapists and healers. But it's also for anybody that's wanting to up-level themselves from the inside out and really start the year off strong. So each day I'm going to lead you through a live transformational group process. I'm going to share with you behind the scenes coaching demos, pulling people up to coach. And I'll give you daily prizes and tools that you can use on yourself and with your clients right away. So you're going to discover the real reason people don't create change so that you can more easily step into your goals. I'll show you how you can create the income that you desire and practical strategies for where to create clients today for free, as well as heart centered sales. You can fall in love with sales with this approach. And I'm going to teach you my manifestation packs as well so that you have everything that you need to embody a deeper sense of confidence. And then lastly, I will share with you, not only tell you, but also show you the power of embodiment work so that you you can specifically use it to transform your relationship with money and attract real abundance so that you're really set up to scale with ease in all the ways that you're called to. I cannot wait to share this with you. Again, it's absolutely free. It's transformational and it's going to be so good. And research shows that we grow so much faster in community. So send this to a friend that you want to do this with and help hold yourself accountable. Again, it's free. So join us before it's too late. All you have to do is go to alissanobriga.com forward slash bootcamp and reserve your space now. Okay, so I I know that we've got that for January. Are there moments within the year or times that are also opportunistic for yeah. as a collective for yeah. personal or professional growth that we should be aware of? Yes, so eclipses are okay. humongous game changers for people's journeys. So okay. we have them all the time. We have them every year. Um, we have another round of eclipses coming up. There's a few every year that happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. every Around every six months, okay. there are eclipses. And so eclipses are huge game changers for your soul. We all feel them because mm -hmm. we're in this collective energy. But if they aspect a planet in your chart, that means something is getting eclipsed in your life. And that's where the big shifts happen. So 
it's like clockwork all the time when the eclipses are coming in. I always tell people about a month before. That's mm-hmm. when you're going to see the changes. People get married. People have a baby. People get a job. People also lose a job. People also get divorced. People also change. You know, it, it's change. Yeah. Right. So that's why when people ask, is it good or is it bad? I can't change. say because maybe your divorce is really hard right now, but maybe that will be the best thing right. for you. And, you know, what? Or maybe that job loss is horrible right now, but then it opens up a whole new mm-hmm. door. So the, the key with eclipses is it moves you on your soul's path. Okay. So I always say whatever happens around an eclipse, you just, you have to go with it. Surrender. So Sur- absolutely surrender. Um, I remember there was a time I met somebody on an eclipse. It hit my Venus. And then six months later, we broke up on another eclipse. Wow. And I was like, okay. We like played that is, out. W- this <laughs> is divinely done. orchestrated. This is done. <laughs> like, okay. And I was like, oh, that was like clockwork, yeah. you know? So you have to let it go. Mm -hmm. And that just meant I was ready to move on a different path and he Mm -hmm. was ready to move on Mm -hmm. to a different path. And it's like, that's just an example of, I think it gives people peace of mind Mm -hmm. um, because eclipses are powerful. This is, they change the trajectory of your life because Mm -hmm. it's connected to your soul's mission, not your ego's mission. And so the eclipses this year are where? The dates here, we have a full moon lunar eclipse at five degrees of Libra on March 25th. Okay. Okay, then we have a new moon solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Aries on April 8th. So just a note, April is going to be a dynamic month. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just on many levels, there's just a lot going on energetically. And that um, new moon is a big one. It's a north node moon. Um, so that's powerful. That actually hits, um, my mercury in my chart. So I'm like, let's go, let's bring <laughs> this. Cause uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So then, um, six, around six months later, we have another full moon lunar eclipse at 25 degrees of Pisces and that's September 17th. Mm-hmm. Then we have a new moon solar eclipse at, um, 10 degrees of Libra on October 2nd. Okay. okay? So they come in pairs. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I tell people it's okay when the eclipse is not hitting a planet for you every time you actually don't want that. (laughs) It's too, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it's too much, but we're all going to feel the energy. So around the eclipses, everyone's like, what's going on? I'm like, it's eclipse season. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you guys were worried about Mercury retrograde, which we'll talk about. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. That's like a little little kid Blip. project compared to <laughs> eclipse season you know okay. that's where you got to be like okay yeah. sit down we got to use our tools right now okay because things change yeah and so i guess yeah. the way that people navigate change mm-hmm. will be a huge yes. uh indicator of how graceful how much they can let go yeah and just trust that it's all unfolding for their mm-hmm. highest and yeah. to use everything for our growth and evolution yeah. And we listen at this point on both our journeys, we've both been brought to our knees, right? Mm-hmm. We both gone, we've been through the ringer and there are times when you have to just be brought to your knees yeah. and you just let it out. You yeah. cry, yeah. you kick and scream. Your ego is like, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> right. And, and then it passes. That's right. Right. And then you let it go and then something new comes in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I wanted to let people know that because it's important, you know, we're taught like, oh, this is not high vibe or this is not. We need to feel. Yes. I know you talk about that a lot. Yeah. We need to feel. Yes. And you let it pass through That's you. That's right. But it's not attaching to the story of it. A hundred percent. And the more we can just allow whatever is in the yeah. moment, the easier it lets go. Because mm-hmm. people and parts of us defend to the degree that they don't feel accepted. Yes. So the more we accept it, ironically, the more it moves on. Yes. So great plug for doing personal development work as a Mm -hmm. toolkit is one of the intentions of this podcast is to give people a toolkit for humanity because there are tools to help us navigate challenging times and the more we're empowered the better of an influence we are in the world absolutely and we're gonna continue needing these tools because things get a little gnarly as we increase in consciousness Mm -hmm. because we're holding on to our old belief systems yeah Yeah. The more we hold, the more we suffer. And I think that's a beautiful, sometimes suffering is intelligent. Mm -hmm. It's feedback to let go. And we all have that choice. And I know that we've been dealt different cards. So the more we're equipped, the better. 
Yeah. Okay. So we've got eclipses Mm -hmm. and it's interesting because I haven't heard too much about eclipses. I hear the big buzz around retrogrades and I really love how you hold this. Instagram astrology. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) That's how I'm learning. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) And it's good to hear from your expertise, like what's it really about? And, you know, for me, and I like how you hold it, it's lightly. It's, you know, sometimes Mm -hmm. I'll look at these things in retrospect, or if I know there's a retrograde coming up, for example, I know retrogrades happen to do a lot with communication and technology. Mm -hmm. And in December, I was prepping for a launch, and we had a retrograde. So I just had extra meetings with my team to make sure, but no fear, just like, are you really clear? Is the the this, the message sent, the message received, so yes. that it was you know preparing in a way? Right. But can you share with us a little bit about how to hold retrogrades? Because yes. they're also a time of deep healing and clearing. Yes. Because if we don't yes. do that work, we just postpone yes. it. Yes. So it can really offer us a time of feeling lighter mm-hmm. and freer as a result. But can you share with us how you hold retrogrades? So I love this conversation, and I love that you know a lot about this. Um, I like to see, or say, I should say, retrogrades are a yin period, Mm. okay? It is a time to lean back. You know, we live in this world where it's hustle, hustle, push, 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 produce, produce, and that's not realistic for everyone, unless you're a generator like yourself, you know? We talked about this before. (laughs) But, you know, that's not realistic for everyone all the time, Yeah. right? We have ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. And so I love retrogrades in a way. They do get wonky. Yeah. You know, we'll talk about that. Um... But it's a time to lean back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to say something different that a lot of astrologers won't say. Or uh, there's a difference in opinion. And that's okay. Right? Like to each their own. Everyone has their own journey. Mm -hmm. I don't stop my life during retrograde. Now, if I can avoid signing something and it could be done after, great. Like a contract or something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But if there are times when this this is life and life has to go on. Yeah. So you do what you can. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there because I know there's so many people that are so scared during retrogrades. They like are afraid to do anything because there's a lot of fear. Yeah. And I think that's, I love that you bring that. I love the yin perspective yeah. because there's ebbs and flows inhale mm-hmm. exhale yes. expansion contraction yes. is part of life yes and yin, it's a dance it's a dance and yin feels healthy mm-hmm. we do we want stability we don't want burnout yeah. Yeah. and so taking that time to be more in that yin space of just relaxation but without yeah. the fear mm-hmm. so because otherwise i think people can get really uh, tight and narrow on this is the negative thing that's going to happen. Yes. I remember when I used to use the Whoop, this app that it would check HRV. It's similar to an Aura Ring, mm-hmm. and I didn't get good quality sleep. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a rough day. Which I don't know if it was going to be a rough right, day. Right, but you're yeah. So it's like watching the mind to not right. project fear, but to also right. just be aware. How can I set myself up for success in this time? Absolutely, Ooh, and that was a beautiful well. example mm-hmm. of we're not assuming yeah. right that it's going to be like that. Yeah. So. Mercury retrograde is a time where we take a step back, we pause, we review things. So it's any R-E, review, repeat, redo, rejuvenate, right? All the things. And, you know, Mercury is about technology. It's about communication. It's about information. So that's why things get a little wonky and a little bit crazy. And you don't have to believe in astrology, but you will see things happen during Mercury retrograde because retrograde, they just do. Yeah. Like especially in the beginning and especially at the end, mm. you could even see computers slow down. You know, it's, it's energy and mm-hmm. everything is a vibrational pull. Mm-hmm. So we have to be aware of our communication. You know, um, we can say something, they heard it a different way. You know, you sent an email to the wrong person, right? Th- a lot of things happen. Yeah. Okay. And it's really a time, again, to, to dance with the cosmic rhythm. Mm-hmm. And I don't freak out about it. Good. Like I said, I don't, if I can avoid signing, I would avoid. Mm-hmm. But also I've done things during Mercury Retrograde and life goes on. And yeah. I also am a big proponent and a, have an understanding that if you do something during Mercury Retrograde, that's also part of the journey. Yeah. I have seen things like in the past, like before I started this, when I had, you know, my other jobs 16 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I remember signing a contract. I had to work with a, a company at the time and it was a very con- uh, karmic situation. You know, um, I, I learned how to send love to really nasty people mm-hmm. 
um, 16 years ago um, by spirit telling me because of the situation I was in with work. And so I had to learn. It was like boot camp, spiritual yeah. boot camp. Yeah. So I can see that that was part of my journey, mm-hmm. right? So whatever happens during a Mercury retrograde, there's also lessons and experiences 100%. there. And you might not figure it out right now, but you figure it out later, yeah. right? I think the biggest thing that I want to get across is sometimes we don't have the clarity. You know, we might have the clarity if we take a step back, but if you're not taking a step back and you're just pushing forward all the time, you might not have the clarity. So that's why they say, wait till it's done. Then when it starts to move forward, it starts to pick up speed again, reconsider this, you know, maybe you're seeing something differently. So another good thing with it being a yin period it's very tuned into our psyche Mm -hmm. um, and our intuition. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful time to do psychic, spiritual, intuitive work. I noticed I was really, really in touch with my intuition during that time. Yes. Like on a whole other level. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a really good time for that. Beautiful. Because that's like the moon energy, that's the feminine, that's the yin energy. Yeah. But the pushing out and the doing and the yang and that masculine, it's not as much as in alignment, right? Mm -hmm. So do all the spiritual stuff, do the, you know, take your Reiki courses, do your healing, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, those are beautiful times to reconnect Mm -hmm. because it's almost like the channel opens in a different way and you see something differently, but take that information, like write it down, sit with it. And then when it moves forward, make sure that it's still aligned because that's where it's like all the wires are crossing so yet yeah, you're getting a lot of information, but one of the biggest things is just because you tap into something spiritually doesn't mean it's ready to manifest <laughs> here or it will manifest here in the physical, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's a slippery slope for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I had a download about that. I was going to be with a Latin man when I was with a German man and mm. I was totally in love with this German man and was not ready to receive that information. Yes. I was really sad about it and yeah. I loved my boyfriend at the time and I love my husband but Mm -hmm. sometimes that information comes in yes before we're ready or before I was psychologically ready to hear it Mm -hmm. and I think of even triggers when I really go through a trigger which I know retrogrades can bring stuff up that have been under the rug yeah I think that that's a beautiful time to see what's inside me that's looking Mm -hmm. to be healed yes because if I don't go direct to heal it I just take it with me and so Mm -hmm to have gratitude for whatever that time showed us to, to be able to clear it at the root, then we live lighter and freer. So I love that frame on it as well. I mean, that's the beauty of astrology and the work that we both do. Um, I think it's scary for a lot of people to look at themselves in the mirror, Yeah, you know, and I've seen that and I have compassion for that. I, I'm constantly looking in the mirror and I'm not going to say I'm perfect, And I'm always here to improve, right? But I I have seen that it is scary for a lot of people Mm -hmm. because that means that they have to admit things to themselves. But that's where people start, right? If you want to know where to start, that's where you start. Mm -hmm. With the triggers. With the triggers and and, and being real with yourself and being honest with yourself. Yeah. And with the right tools and Mm -hmm. the right safe environments, it's it's actually easier to look Mm -hmm. than to avoid. Yeah. Most people think it's hard to feel something. Because you're living a lie then. They're living a lie or or they're not really feeling it. They're thinking about it and they're staying above it. So when you really just drop in, Mm -hmm. it moves through just like we're talking. So having, that's why part of this podcast is like giving people different perspectives, giving them practical tools that they can apply. Okay, so we've got retrogrades. What are some of the retrograde times for 2024? Yeah, let me give them to you here. So that we can, no fear, but be aware and yeah. be in the CN state. Okay, and the dates I'm going to give you, they might be off a day or so. It depends on where you are in the world and what mm-hmm. ephemeris you use. So just, it's like roughly around the, the date. Okay. okay, so the first one is April 1st, and that's around, it's at 27 degrees of Aries. And then it, that when it stations retrograde. And then Mercury goes direct on April 25th at 15 degrees of Aries. Yeah, April is busy. Yeah, April is a busy month. Yeah. yeah. And then we have in August, so Mercury stations retrograde August 4th at 4 degrees of Virgo. Mm. And then it goes direct on August 28th at 21 degrees of Leo. Okay, and then we have it stationed retrograde, retrograde on November 25th at 22 Sag. And then it stations direct on December 15th at six degrees of Sag. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 So it's just, it's just part of our journey. Yeah. It's really, you know, it, you know, it got popular on Instagram, which is great. So it brings, (laughs) brings attention, 
But there's also a lot of it sounds like know, fear mongering. Should yeah. be a little bit more. I mean, I say this every time. Yeah. People that follow me know that I'm like, it's eclipse season. We're getting down to business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you thought Mercury retrograde was scary? We'll just sit down, yeah. buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And really, yeah. it's all in service to our growth. So it, it's, it's all, all yeah. aligned with what our soul wanted. And yeah. I keep getting reminded constantly from spirit as I designed this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I designed this. Right. But that's a. Yeah. There's no victim. Mm -mm. It's like, oh, this is for my yeah. highest good. How do yeah. I use this to learn and grow? Whether somebody believes this for your highest good or not. Yeah. When I adopt that mindset, I don't feel a victim. I feel more empowered. And I, whether it's true or not, I just feel better about yeah. it. Yeah. And so I know 2023, there was a lot of talk about Venus, which Venus was a lot about relationships with self and others. Um, can What is it in the relationship landscape for 2024? Do you know anything mm. about that? Well, uh, 2024 is an eight year. That's about destiny. It's about karma. So, you know, I think I posted something recently on this. People need to start getting very real. Mm -hmm. with themselves and that's going to shift a lot of relationships mm -hmm. and you know if it's before I think a lot of people could sort of or just as a collective I should say could kind of push things under the surface and just kind of scoot on by mm -hmm. it's going to be mirrored now mm -hmm. even more mm -hmm. so in terms of relationships it's just very important to get real mm -hmm. like are we on the same page mm -hmm. is this what we want I wanted this then but do I want this now mm -hmm. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. Real adult conversations are yeah. necessary. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I did a podcast about the first seven years and the second seven years. Mm. We're he heading into our next seven years. Yep. Seven and year cycle. Saturn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Saturn every mm -hmm. seven years? Yeah. yeah. And they say that the body changes every seven yep. years, your cells. So seven year cycles, even psychologically mm -hmm. in the Waldorf school, I think it's, I think it's important to continue to evolve and yes. to meet each other in relationships, yes. especially the longer ones we've been in yes. to meet a new. Yes. Yeah. There is no way we're the same people. And, you know, I have friends that they got married at 21 and, you know, things are different now and, and it's okay. That's like okay. it's, you are supposed to evolve. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. same with your partner is supposed to evolve mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And I think when we do the internal work, there's a level of sourcing our okayness mm -hmm. and connection with all of life that yeah. we're not thinking that the partner is going to give it to us. Right. And then we can let them go every day yeah. and we choose each other consciously, but mm -hmm. not out of fear or grasping. Yeah. And we keep using that mirror because the closer the relationship, the closer the mirror. Yeah. And I, that's such important and powerful work. And I, my team was telling me that mm -hmm. we're going into the North and South nodes, which this is all very new for me. Yeah. Um, what they were sharing with me, was a little bit about, um, putting yourself first. It's like not North hiding. Areas, yeah. Okay. Not hiding around yeah. what people think and putting yeah. yourself first. Can you share a little bit about Yeah, this? sure. Okay. So we are still in, um, 2024. We're still in the same nodal axis. Mm -hmm. um, it shifts in 2025. So we have the North node in Aries and the South node in Libra. So the nodal axis is very important because it's also connected to the eclipses. So that's why the eclipses are so important. Okay. The nodal axis is our collective soul journey. So in our birth chart, it's our personal soul journey. Mm -hmm. And then collectively, it's where we're all going together. So right now we have the North Node in Aries. So it is learning independence. It's learning me first. It's mm -hmm. learning I can do this. It's learning I don't need to ask everyone. I can just jump in. Now, I have so much areas in my chart. Like you're good. I'm like, oh my God, I need to learn the other things. I'm like, I need to be like, oh, is there someone else here? Like, yes. let's talk. Right. So that's important see. that you see. Yes. yes, absolutely. And I'll get back to that in a moment. And then we have the South node in Libra. So we are letting go, go back to your relationship question. We're letting go of relationships that don't serve us. Yeah. We're letting go of fake love. We're letting go of mediocre love. We're letting go of things that are just not in alignment anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because we're moving on to that independence. So mm -hmm. that's the collective energy. Um, but yes, we also have our own journeys, our own cycles. You know, in my b own birth chart, I have a south node in Aries. So I am naturally independent. I am naturally know how to go. Yeah. I'm learning north node in Libra, which is partnership, which is Good. balance. So even though that's the collective, again, 
it's important to note that we all have our own cycles and mm-hmm. our own journey mm-hmm. of what's going on. I'm like, I honestly like don't need any more independence. Like, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, I am the queen of independence, mm-hmm. you know? So because mm-hmm. I'm just wired that way. Yeah. Which is not bad. It's just there's gifts in that too. That's right. There's magic. But then it's like, what are we here to learn? Expand. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if I keep doing the same thing, like that's boring for me. Yeah. I mean, my soul knows how to do that. I yeah. can start a hundred businesses, buy a hundred houses, do it all on my own, travel yeah. around the world. It's like, okay, I got that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, where else do we need to learn so everyone should look in their birth chart where is their north node in their birth chart that's going to tell you a lot about what your soul is here to bring in Mm -hmm. I love that you make it more personal so that we ask ourselves questions because you know self-reliance can be a safety strategy Mm -hmm. not to get hurt yes so psychologically speaking if we're I've got it on my own so Mm -hmm. that nobody hurts me yes when we're honest with ourselves where are we coming from yeah and then what's our growth opportunity is it relationally or is it sourcing Mm -hmm. I call it insourcing so we're not outsourcing our okayness how do I be with the parts of me that are scared of change or whatever is coming up yeah so that's beautiful that we hold it with lightly with a grain of salt, what's important for us. And so we've got this collective map and we also have our, our personal ones. Mm -hmm. What are, what do you see as opportunities for us to become more aware of utilizing our strengths personally or overcoming some of our weaknesses? Like how do you kind of guide people to, to take advantage of their strengths and kind of overcome their weaknesses? Yeah. Well, I love, I mean, since we're talking, there's many tools, but since we're talking about astrology, let's, let's dive in. You know, I love teaching about the birth chart because um, just today, my friend that took my course said this is better than therapy, Mm -hmm. right? And and therapy is important too, but this shows you your behavioral patterns. Mm -hmm. Like this is why we do the things we do. So I would say dive into learning your birth chart. How are you wired, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone is wired differently, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, It will show you so much love and compassion for yourself. And it will also show you, oh, that's why I keep doing that. Oh, that's why my tendency is that. And maybe that's not the best expression, but I can see why I'm prone to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me learn the higher octave of it Mm -hmm. so I don't keep doing the shadow energy. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts with um, astrology, looking at your birth chart, seeing how you're wired. You know, um, where is Venus in your chart? How do you relate in love? Um, Is it aspecting Saturn? Is it more... um, is it harder for you to give love, receive love? Is it aspecting Neptune? Are you, um, you know, becoming a martyr in love? Are you not having boundaries in love? Mm-hmm. You know, is it um, conjunct Pluto? Is it, are you becoming obsessive with love? You know, what's going on? And so then you could understand why you are naturally wired and yeah. then again, use it to your highest good. Mm-hmm. So I, I love teaching the birth chart because it's one of the most important things. Yeah. It's a foundation to this earth plane Mm -hmm. and eventually we go beyond astrology and it's like okay then you don't even need this because you go into the void and your oneness and all that but (laughs) before you go there it's like why are you keep you know hitting your head against the wall figure that out first Uh you know uh yeah I think it gives a map it's like similar like I keep using the frame of Enneagram it just gives compassion like oh this is the more I learn about some of these maps I'm like I feel so unoriginal and yeah. I think yeah. it, it helps breed compassion yeah. for oh this is what I'm playing out this is what my soul is yes. learning through this yes. human experience yeah the process this is the dance these are the the beautiful opportunities mm-hmm. and also your gifts you know what are your talents and what yes. are your gifts you know when I had my awakening now 16 years ago which is crazy how time flies but I started learning astrology because I'm like, I don't even actually know who I am or what I'm doing, right? Yes. Like I, I got blasted open and I had no idea. So then I found astrology. Obviously, it was I was meant to find it. I started teaching myself and I started looking at the birth chart because mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I don't really know who I am anymore. So maybe this is going to help me. And I started understanding, oh, this is why I am. Oh, these are my gifts. Oh, I am really good at this. Oh, yeah, I do that. And it's right there in my chart. So then it gives you a confidence. It gives you a direction. Mm-hmm. It gives you a... Um, a path Mm -hmm. and then you know you go deeper into like your soul's journey but it's uh, anyways it's we can talk about that forever but it's a beautiful beautiful tool yeah and I also know there's something called astro cartography yes which is where you live and how you different parts of the world where you thrive can you share with us a little bit about? so I don't study that um, because it's very specific Mm -hmm. but it is you can lay out your birth chart um, over the world and there's different ley lines that run through and And that changes I think over time too um not really. Okay. We have our birth chart. I mean, there are transits that come uh-huh. through that. Okay. But here's the thing I want to say, because I know everyone's like, oh, I have my Saturn here, so I can't go there. 
Yeah. It's so much deeper than that. You know, it depends on what lines are running through. Where is that in your birth chart? And then how is that being activated in your birth chart? So, you know, like in Florida, I have, um, what I have Pluto, Mars, um, I think I had Saturn, Sun and the Moon. I mean, it just was, it's a lot. Okay. And so there's a lot of intensity that happens in Florida. Here in California, I have um, no lines, but that doesn't mean it's not a good place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, we're going to get activated. And so sometimes it's it's hard to live on a place that has so many lines because it's constant energy, but it's also there are lessons. Like that's why going to visit places, you, you know, you mm-hmm. learn different lessons. And then you also have, you know, your soul has a connection to the land too. Yeah. So now we're going beyond just the birth chart. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And just, just to give people yeah. an understanding. So the astro cartography mm-hmm. is different places that you are can activate different energies based yes. on your birth chart. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you've talked yeah. about soul contracts a few mm-hmm. times. I've heard you mention that. Yeah. Can you share with us what that is in your eyes? Oh, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we could be here for, I mean, I love this topic yeah. and this is what I'm writing my book on right oh, now. Beautiful. Okay. Soul contracts. So we have many. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a contract right now. Mm-hmm. We have a contract. That's why we met even. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to tell everyone, you messaged me and you were so nice. You're just like, I just like your work and I want to get to know you. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, she's so nice. And like, that's how we met. Yeah. So it was just, it was so beautiful and pure and that's very rare these days. So thank you. Mm, Yeah. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. Um, Soul contracts. So we're here to learn through duality, Mm -hmm. through relationship, Mm -hmm. through experiences. And how else are we going to get these experiences? Then I like to call them actors, like bring in actor number one, bring in player number two, (laughs) you know, stage five, uh, code blue, bring in this one. She's not getting it. You need to get it here. And they're they're intense, right? And they could be romantic. They could be, um, you know, platonic. They could be anything. But we have experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, our souls are all one anyways. Mm -hmm. So we've danced the dance together before. So these contracts are really what bring us back into alignment with our truth. Mm. And, you know, the book I'm writing is on all my experiences in love, because let me tell you, it's been a journey. (laughs) And really, you know, someone asked me, they're like, because it's about all the guys and and all the crazy things that have happened. And someone's like, are you going to bash all them? And I'm like... No, yeah. I'm not because even though, yes, many of them acted in ways that are not the highest good, I also agreed to this and mm-hmm. I also stayed in some of these things. Mm-hmm. And also it's irrelevant. I don't need to bash anyone because these were the contracts so that I could become who I am now. Yeah. So I'm actually thinking every single one good. of them energetically too yes. because I am who I am because of these soul contracts. Yeah. And I had to learn the deepest, deepest sense of self-love mm. through this that's beautiful and I have no regrets and mm-hmm. it, it was amazing and yeah I'm writing this book to help people not cry as much as I yeah. did <laughs> yeah we want to give back yep. so we can help others yep. not learn the hard way yes. yeah I know when I went to Bhutan, we, I went for the Gross National Happiness Conference and we came to talk about something deeper than happiness. And I learned in the Bhutanese culture that when you're even just on an airplane with somebody, they believe that you have had to have so many lifetimes mm-hmm. just to sit on an airplane, that there's so much reverence and respect. I have it's a story. so heartfelt. Like literally I was walking through the mountains of Bhutan and they just bow with their hands mm. open to you. Beautiful. So much love that that culture is just founded in the heart. It's so beautiful to hold it that way. That's beautiful. And this reminds me, I have a quick story if yeah. I can share. Yeah. I haven't shared this publicly yet, but anyways, I just flew out here and my, I don't like flying in general, mm. but I fly and I just, you know, deal with it. Mm-hmm. The turbulence was so bad. I've never, I mean, 45 years, I've never experienced turbulence like this. Mm -hmm. I was literally screaming, Mm -hmm. okay? There were other people screaming too. Let's just, I was so scared. I was crying and screaming. I literally thought the plane was going to go down, Mm -hmm. okay? We were dropping. It felt like it was hitting a wall. I mean, it wouldn't stop, Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, it was like, unlike, I felt like I was in a movie. Yeah. The guy in front of me, after it stopped, he turned around. He held my hand. Mm -hmm. He put his hand on my other hand on my shoulder. Yeah. And he said, breathe with me. Mm. I know. And he's like, you're going to be okay. And he said, that was bad. Yeah. He's like, but you're going to be okay. And I look at him and I go, do I know you? And I was like, and then I'm like, wait, are you an actor? Because I was like, <laughs> do, is that how I know him? And he's like, no, I'm not an actor. I'm like, you looked so familiar. Yeah. 
after, and I know there was a contract, so that's why I'm bringing this up, mm. because, and I thanked him again. I'm like, thank you so much. And he said, if his wife was there, she would have been exactly the same as mm. me. And I, and there were other people screaming too, yeah. and things were everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was the end, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, this is how it's happening. Mm -hmm. So, but his kindness and compassion, and I can tell there was a contract because I, he looked at me and I'm just like, I know this guy. Yeah. And he just, he said to me, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And he goes, that was bad, but we're going to be okay. Yeah. I, unreal. Beautiful. Right. So talk about soul contracts. Yeah. And just the human spirit, the heart, you know, and, and yes. I think these soul contracts are also people that trigger us. Mm -hmm. They help us learn yes. and evolve. That's, that's part of this dualistic oh, reality. Yes. <laughs> so I love that you yeah. got to a place of thanking all of your exes to yeah. help shape the diamond that you are the human that you are thank you for making heart. me the most beautiful baddest bitch ever <laughs> I, I honestly i i love myself so much now and that's yeah. hard for people to hear because it's it's triggering to people and I, I love who i am yeah and i love what i offer to the world yeah and i think i think it's, it's so important mm -hmm. that you share that i think it's so beautiful thank you i think it's an example and I think the more people that we do this work and we are unapologetic yeah. in what our truth is, it shows yeah. up, it can be triggering, but it's also yeah. inspiring. And the mm -hmm. bigger we are in our leadership, the bigger mirror we are for people's yes. shadow and light. Oh, yes. Yeah. Gotta yeah. love the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for who you are. I'm so grateful that you're in my world. Thank you for sharing your magic thank with you. my audience. I know people are going to want to stay connected. Where do they find you? Thank you for having me on. Yeah. And they can go to my Instagram at I am Danielle Page and also my website, daniellepage.com. I have everything at my link in the bio. I should have worn the shirt. My friend made me a shirt that says link in bio. Because <laughs> she's like, you say it all the time. Yeah. She made me a shirt. Good. So that's where you can find me. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much for doing this work that changes the world, starting with yourself. It truly does make a difference. And if you're finding value in this podcast, a cost-free way to support us is by leaving an up to five-star review. It does mean the world to us. And as a thank you gift, we're going to send you one of the most powerful tools that you will ever discover. You're going to get behind the scenes access, showing you how to live into your full potential without letting fear hold you back from stepping into your dreams. Just head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify and leave a review now. You can take a screenshot before hitting submit and then go to alissanobriga.com forward slash podcast to upload it. And make sure to have your automatic downloads turned on wherever you listen so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I have so much magic I can't wait to share with you. And you can find all this information in the show notes below. But lastly, if you're on Instagram, I love connecting and hearing from you. So come on over and say hello. I'm at alissanobriga. Thank you again for being here. I cannot wait to share more with you.